everybody, welcome back to my channel and to another video. In this one, I'm going to be testing out all vegan watercolor supplies because about a year ago, me and my husband went fully vegan and slowly as I've been buying new art supplies, I've been replacing my art supplies that I currently use that aren't vegan with some vegan alternatives. So I did a watercolor haul recently where I bought new paints, new brushes, masking fluid and little other bits and pieces. And I thought in today's video, it'd be fun to create a whole painting just using those vegan watercolor supplies, just to test them out, see how they do, and see if there's any difference between those supplies and the ones that I previously used before. So without further ado, let's get into it. So I'm just going to start off by going through all of the supplies that I'll be using for the painting, all of the different bits and pieces that I purchased when I did my watercolour haul. As you can see here they all are nicely laid out and let's start off with the paint. Now I actually bought some tube watercolours, I've never used tube paints before, I'm used to using a pan set of watercolours so I was very surprised at just how expensive expensive these were. I mean, I don't know if it's just because of the brand I bought. I brought the Holbein watercolors. So it might just be because they are more of a professional brand, but they were really expensive. It was like 10, 11, I think sometimes even 15 pounds for one of these tubes. So yeah, I was really, really having a lot of high hopes for these and expecting them to perform really well. I didn't get loads of different colours, I just got a couple of each main colour, so I got like one yellow, one orange, one red, like one of each of those colours, ones that I wouldn't use too much, and then I got quite a few of the more neutral colours, like yellow ochres and browns, which I'd use quite a lot for things like portraits. Then for the paper, for the last few months I've been using this one, this is vegan and it is the Fabriano Aquarello cold pressed watercolour paper and it is £140 in weight and it is 9 by 12 inches and I have loved using this, it is so good and yeah I'm excited to see how it works with the other paints today. So for brushes, I've got synthetic ones and these are the Jackson's Studio synthetic brushes and I got a range of sizes and one thing that I've never tried out before is flat brushes. So I got a few of them in different sizes to try them out as well as a few different sizes of round brushes. So some really small ones for details and then some large ones. As always, I will list out all of these materials in the description below if you wanna check them out yourself. One thing that I wanted to use is masking fluid, so I got the Pabeo, don't know how to pronounce that, but I got the drawing gum, and this has a nice blue colour, so I wanted that so that it's easy to see when you apply it to the paper. And I also got this double-ended rubber and brush tool to use with the masking fluid. Now, before we move on to the painting, if you wanna get access to a free two hour real time tutorial for watercolors and how I painted these flowers, then you can get access to this when you join my mailing list. On my mailing list, I do monthly newsletters with a roundup of all of the best art content that I have posted throughout the month, as well as exclusive discounts on my courses and lots of other exclusive art content which you don't find anywhere else. So I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Low. It's now time to get started with the painting and I was really excited to try out this masking fluid and to especially use this applicator tool because I've never tried anything like it. Initially I thought it was great, I really enjoyed using it but I did notice that it becomes harder to use after you've used it for a bit and you have to keep going in with a tissue to pull off the buildup of masking fluid that gets onto the rubber tip because it just kind of sticks there and it was a bit difficult to do lots of detail in like a continuous sequence. I had to keep rubbing off that masking fluid before dipping the, the rubber tool back into the masking fluid. Now the reason why I wanted to get this brush and rubber applicator tool is because masking fluid for any of you that have used it, you will know how easily it ruins your brushes. So I wanted something that I could specifically use with masking fluid where I didn't have to worry about it ruining the bristles because I've used it before with my good quality watercolour brushes and have been really, really upset when it just completely destroys them. It just gets into all of the bristles and clogs it up because 
course it's a rubber latex so I recommend getting something like this or a brush that you're just using for masking fluid as you won't have to become upset that your favorite brush has become ruined. I also wanted to try out a splatter effect with the masking fluid so I've splattered a bit of it on the background as you can see by tapping the back of that applicator tool to create some little droplets of masking fluid especially around the cat and I really was interested to see what sort of effect this gave when I peeled it off later on in the painting process. Now moving on to adding the watercolours and I've selected the ones that I first want to use for the background. I tend to do a wet in wet background first and then move on to the focal point of the painting and I didn't want to use too many different colours and I wasn't sure how much of each tube of paint to put on my palette so I started off with a really small amount and I quickly came to realise that even that small dot of paint that you can see was too much in some cases. I didn't realise how concentrated and pigmented these tube paints were and now I can understand why they were so expensive because you just don't need much at all. It goes such a long way, especially with the blue colour that I was using first at the top of that palette. I literally touched the tiniest bit into the water and it was so pigmented. Whereas normally I use the Cotman watercolours and I'd have really had to dig into that pan to get this sort of pigmentation. So I definitely think it's probably worth it for the amount of uses that I'll get out of one tube of paint. The ones that I got were 15 mil and that is going to last me so long compared to a little pan. I mean... I know the Cotman ones that I was using before are student grade paints, so that that's probably why it's also a little less pigmented. I'm sure professional pan sets are a lot more pigmented, but the tubes I think are probably just a lot more concentrated in general than pan sets overall. And it's really good because it means that you can get really dilute versions of your colours but then you have the option of having that really intense, vibrant look to your work. So you can get so many different colours from one colour. As you can see I'm working wet on wet so that means that I wet the surface of my paper first and now I'm just going in and I'm tapping in the blues, some greens and some darker greens to give a bit of contrast to the background. And the reason that I love this technique is because it gives a really soft out of focus look which is super nice and I think it's great because it means that you can have the background as just nice and out of focus and then it really draws your eye and your attention to the thing that you want to be in focus and the focal point of your drawing or painting. So here I am painting this nice kitten in a tree and of course I want the cute kitten to be the focal point so I didn't want to add too much detail to the background. One thing that wasn't in my reference was the pink blossom which you'll see me adding in and that's just because I felt like the greenery and just the tree was a bit boring so I wanted to add in some pink blossom just to make it look a little more interesting. Now let's move on to talking about the brushes. I before was using the silver black velvet brushes which are a mix of squirrel hair and I think synthetic so definitely not vegan and so I've gone for some synthetic ones here and I was really disappointed with them it just is a lot harder to get a lot of water on your brush when they're synthetic because synthetic brushes have more of that plasticky sort of coating to them whereas obviously real animal hair is going to absorb a lot more water so I found that I had to approach this a completely different way than I would with my normal paintings normally my brush can hold so much water whereas I just wasn't used to having to go back into my of water over and over again and I even noticed that when I first wet my paper the amount that I normally would do with my brush would get it nice and wet whereas here I did that same amount expecting it to be the same but I noticed that I didn't have to work on that wet and wet background long before it was starting to dry out simply because the synthetic brushes obviously weren't holding as much water and so it wasn't getting the paper surface as wet as it needed to be to do the wet on wet technique nice and effectively. I especially noticed this with the larger brushes with the uh, flat brushes because they were bigger it was just obvious the difference in the amount of water they could hold and it's just something that I really didn't like 
use them with the synthetic brushes i mean i don't know if that's all synthetic watercolor brushes you guys will have to comment below if you've used loads of different synthetic watercolor brushes are some just worse than others or is this just a property of synthetic brushes overall I mean, like I said, I know they've got more of a plasticky coating to them, which is going to make them make them harder to actually soak up all of that water. But maybe there's a different type of brush and bristles that aren't animal fur, but absorb a bit more water and moisture and paint than the synthetic ones. Because I don't know if you guys have seen my other videos, but you also probably know that I use the pull up technique quite a lot with my brushes, where I use a clean damp brush to lift up and create highlights in my work. And so, yeah, let me know in the comment section what brushes you use for your watercolor paintings and whether you have a problem with synthetic brushes in them not actually holding enough water. So another little technique that I'm using now is I'm using white gouache. This is something that I didn't show at the start because I wasn't planning on using it, but I checked to see whether it was vegan and it is. So this is the Winsor & Newton Designers Gouache in the shade Permanent White. And I mixed the white gouache with a bit of that pigmented pink watercolor. And I just love that bright rose watercolor. It's so vibrant. And I'm going in with a bit of a old washing up sponge and I'm just dipping it into that gouache watercolor mix. And this is great for adding highlights on top of those darker layers of watercolor because watercolors themselves are very transparent. So you can't really layer lighter colors over the top of darker ones. But once you mix in a little bit of white gouache, it just makes, it just changes everything completely. It makes it so easy to add in these little highlights over the top of your darker layers of watercolor. And so yeah, I just thought the blossom gave a really nice touch to this painting. And I just loved using the sponge to create that randomness in the foliage. Sometimes when you do it just with a brush, it can look a bit uniformed and like very much a uniformed, the same sort of pattern over and over again with your blossom and when you're drawing anything like petals they can all look the same and it can look very rigid whereas when you're using a sponge there's a bit more of a random look to it because not everything's going to look the same it creates really unique sort of splatters and a build-up of that foliage texture and that f flower blossom texture so yeah i really enjoyed using the sponge especially for any sort of landscape painting now moving on to the little kitten and I started off by painting in the eyes. I used the black watercolour. Now I noticed with the Holbein watercolours not every single one of them is vegan. I think there's there's one black one, I can't remember the shade name, but I'll also link in the description an article that someone did or a blog post and it's got a list of all of the vegan supplies for each sort of category and that could be a really good guide for you guys that are interested in this yourself. So it has them all listed out like coloured pencils, watercolours, charcoal, as well as like paper and it just tells you which ones are vegan which are super helpful because I didn't realize that my Archer's hot pressed paper wasn't vegan, something they use in the, the glue and the binding. And so yeah, those resources are really useful, so I'll link them in the description for you guys that are interested in that. But I was really, really happy with the black that I got. It was really dark and really intense, whereas with my pan set of watercolors, sometimes the black is just really more of a gray color and you, again, really have to dig your brush into the pan to get it as dark as you need it to be. I know whenever I do like silhouette paintings where you need it to be jet black, it takes me ages to build up that intensity in my palette whereas with the tube watercolor it's just so easy because of the intensity of those watercolors and you don't have to even waste much paint or use much paint to get it as dark as you want it to be it's really easy to get those really dark shadows and those dark values so I built this painting up in layers. The first sort of layer, I just sort of established the colors of the fur and got in that base wash. I wanted the cat to still be very expressive but have realistic elements to it. So that's why I'm going back in with a second and third layer and sort of rendering that fur texture a bit more by adding in a few little individual brush strokes to indicate the direction the fur is going in. 
and you can see that because I've masked off the whiskers and any of the really highlighted parts of the cat, I can paint around them and over the top of them and I don't have to worry about those areas getting dirty or getting any sort of watercolours on them. They're just nicely preserved and it makes it really nice and easy to work this way because you don't have to worry and fret over getting any tiny highlights you know, covered in watercolour. They're just nicely preserved. And then you can go in when your painting is dry and just peel off all of the masking fluid as I'm doing now. It's really easy to do. And I found that this particular masking fluid came off really easily. Normally I have to use my sort of cloth tea towel to really sort of scrub it off. But in this case, this one came off really nicely and di didn't damage my paper at all. And you can see how lovely the highlights look. I've got those really nice bright whiskers and some lovely highlights in the eyes. And I like the way that the sort of splattered effect of the masking fluid looked on the background. It gave a really interesting texture. Now I'm going back in with that white gouache just to clean things up a little bit more. To sort of fix any whiskers where there's a few breaks in the line of the masking fluid. And I'm also adding a bit of texture to the wood. And so that's pretty much it for this painting. Overall, I was really happy with how the supplies performed, especially the paint, the paper, and the masking fluid. The only thing I wasn't really happy with was the brushes. If you are looking to improve your watercolor skills yourself, then over on my Patreon, I have got over 300 real-time tutorials with voiceover for watercolors, but also other mediums like colored pencil, charcoal, pastel, and much more that you can access for just a small amount per month. For each tutorial, you will get all of the resources you need, like the reference, sketch outline, and materials list. And I've recently created this really easy to navigate website so that you can really easily find the tutorials that you're interested in on my Patreon. So I'll leave a link in the description so that you can check that out. But thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new around here. And even tick that bell icon so you do get notified on my future videos. But that is it from me and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye everybody.